Hello everyone, welcome back to the part 3 of Karen Horney's per, uh, theory of personality. Till now what we have covered is, we have covered comparative uh, analysis between Freud and Horney. There are other two parts of this lecture series. We have completed uh, impact of culture, we have completed the importance of childhood experiences, basic hostility and basic anxiety and defenses against basic anxiety. Now, today we are going to talk about compulsive drives. Now, Karen Hornight distinguished between two compulsive drives. Where is this compulsive drive coming from? Actually, uh, we talked about the four... See, here we talked about the four defenses. I would highly request you to go back and see part one and part two for understanding everything which I'm going to be talking about. So, coming back. So, these are the four defenses which we have talked about. Now, what Hornai said that... Uh, these defenses do not necessarily indicate a neurosis, but in neurosis, but in most cases it, it indicates a neurosis. And Horn, I believe that some people uh, use them to some extent or the other, but when it becomes too much, that would indicate neurosis. So, and she also said one thing: compulsion is one of the salient characteristics of all neurotic drives. When it becomes very compulsive for the person to act in that particular way, that may indicate neurosis. From that compulsion, it's coming compulsive drives. Now here, compulsive drives can be distinguished into neurotic needs these are the 10 neurotic needs and the neurotic tre uh, trends are three basic attitudes now coming to the neurotic trend uh, neurotic needs first harnai said that these neurotic needs can be overlapping to each other and uh, the person might employ more than one need the first need is the neurotic need for affection and approval what Horna is saying that in their quest for affection and approval, neurotics attempt indiscriminately to please others. They try to live up to the expectations of others, tend to dread self-assertion. They, If they have to be assertive, they cannot be assertive. In the moments they have to be assertive, they cannot be assertive. And they are quite uncomfortable with the hostility of others as well as the hostile feelings within themselves. They need to please others all the time. This is the neurotic need for affection and approval. The second, the neurotic need for a powerful partner. Some neurotics lack self-confidence. So what they do, what they want to do, they want to attach themselves to a powerful partner. This need includes a over evaluation of love and dread like before we talked about that they feel that love can solve everything so when they have a powerful partner it would solve all their all their issues which they have but it's not so coming to the neurotic need to restrict one's life within narrow borders now neurotics frequently strive to remain uh, in conspicuous uh, to take second place and to be content with very little. They're like, okay, fine, I'll do this. I'm okay with this. Even when actually they're not okay with that. But they tend to take less than what they deserve. They downgrade their abilities and they dread making demands on others. If they deserve something and for that they have to make a demand, they wouldn't. The neurotic need for power. So power and affection is actually two of the most biggest and the greatest neurotic need. The need for power is usually combined with the need for prestige and recognition. This one. Uh, your four 
and 6. It's usually, if a, if a person has the 4th neurotic, they usually have the 6th neurotic as well. So, uh, they want to control others and they want to avoid any feelings of weakness and stupidity. They feel if they are not powerful, it's stupid. The neurotic need to exploit others. They evaluate others and the basis how how they can be used or exploited. For, for them, the other people, they are just a material which can be used in some way or the other, exploited at the same way. And uh, But there's a fear. They, they, they fear being exploited by others. So before getting exploited by others they exploit others so it's a it's a imagined it can be imagined and in most cases it's imagined that uh, they want they are they would be exploited by others so before that happens they, they exploit everybody who comes their way a social recognition and prestige we have talked about the neurotic need for personal admiration uh, admiration now, neurotics have the need, not all, not all, but what the beings out there who do have this neurotic need, I'm talking about those. They have this need to be admired for what they are uh, rather than for what they possess. Their inflated self-esteem uh, must be continually fed by admir admiration and approval of others. They always want uh, approval of others. They always want others to praise them. So this is their neurotic need. Now the neurotic need for ambition and personal achievement. The eighth one. They have this strong desire to be best among everybody. And if they're doing a job they want to be like suppose a, it's a salesman he wants to be the best salesman a best lover the best player the best student the best everything they cannot accept lesser than the best and they must defeat every person in order to confirm that yes i am superior so this is ambition and personal achievement. The neurotic need for self-sufficiency and independence. This want for hyper-independence. They want to move away from the people. And they, and they can get along without others. They can stay very well without others. They, they feel they don't want others. Like uh, some men majorly it's seen that some men they cannot be with only one person they uh, they they cannot be with any person like they do not have successful relationships and even if they do form a relationship with someone they are not able to stay with them for a very long period of time the neurotic need for perfection is that they, they would strive for perfection relentlessly and uh, it's 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 like a proof for uh, their self-esteem and personal superiority if they are not perfect then their their superiority wouldn't be maintained so they need to be perfect all the time they dread making mistakes like they cannot even imagine that they have made a mistake or they have any kind of personal flaw and if, even if they have some kind of weakness they would constantly desperately attempt to hide those weaknesses these are your neurotic needs now what are the neurotic trends so So these um, neurotic needs, which we just saw, can be grouped into three general categories. These can be grouped into these mainly these three general categories. And the neurotic trends are moving toward people, against people, and away from people. So what are these? Now, 
moving towards people you might feel oh that's a good thing that's um uh, that's a very good thing but it's not it does not mean moving towards people in spirit of genuine love so harna is saying it refers to the neurotic need to protect oneself against the feelings of helplessness so in their attempt to protect themselves against the feeling of helplessness compliant people employ either or both the first two neurotic need like they want to strive for affection and approval of others and a powerful partner so that is moving toward the people that is to reduce their own feelings of helplessness what is against people like um what compliant people feel is that everybody is nice but aggressive people uh, take it for granted actually that everyone is hostile so they want to move against people and what happens is that the neurotically aggressive person are just as compulsive as the c- compliant person they are as compulsive like the compliant person is c- compulsive in receiving affection and approval and a powerful partner um hostile and aggressive people are just as compliant from moving against the people like either want the need to be very powerful to exploit others to receive recognition and praise these are very much into people who who are against people and they want to be admired we would be talking about uh, you would see how those match in the next slide now uh, coming to moving away from people this is a strategy to uh, for the people who want privacy independence and again this is the one which is hyper independence they do not want to associate with other people associating with other people it's a lot of strain for them so this is usually this one the neurotic need for self sufficiency and independence and the, uh, yes this one is usually falling in moving away from people they want to be alone you would see how this comes together see these are the three neurotic trends which we just saw and this is the type of personality they they showed that toward people is the compliant personality against people is the aggressive personality away from people it's a detached pers- uh, personality what is their basic conflict compliant is a basic uh, conflict is helplessness a uh, protection against hostility from of others like i said no pre- i've said previously that they actually fear the hostility from others so so it e- either can be real or imagined and before that hostility happens they are hostile to other people and they are completely detached uh personality their basic con- conflict is feelings of isolation now they do not want to feel isolated they are they are away from people all the time they want to don't want to be with people but their basic conflict is actually feelings of isolation they are actually very lonely but they do not want to be fe- feeling that even with people that they are lonely so before anybody makes them feel lonely they push people away and these are the neurotic needs which fall under the three categories of neurotic trends moving on to the intrapsychic conflict this is the last part of uh, the presentation and now the intrapsychic conflicts is that it originates from interpersonal experiences see it originates from interpersonal experiences but it becomes repetitive then what it hap- what happens it becomes part of the pers- person's belief system they develop a life of their own 
an existence separate from the interpersonal conflicts interpersonal conflicts had happened then it gives rise to intrapsychic processes now intrapsychic processes have the body of their own so what are the intrapsychic conflicts the idealized self image and the idealized what is let's first see what is idealized self image so let's recap a bit harnai believed that human beings if given an environment of discipline and warmth will develop feelings of security and self confidence and a tendency to move towards self realization but unfortunately in all the cases that does not happen so what happens they're not going towards the natural tendency of self realization but a situation that lonely situation leaves them uh, with the feelings of isolation and inferiority now adding to this failure is a growing sense of alienation from themselves so when they are feeling alienated from themselves people need desperately to acquire a stable sense of identity now if their identity gets diminished fragmented it's very difficult for a person to survive with fragmented self image now this di- dilemma can be solved by creating an idealized self image they create a self image which is extremely positive extremely positive they make the self image extremely positive as their own self image they feel that is their self image but this is just a creation uh, a creation of their mind they see themselves as a hero they see themselves as a hero they are genius supreme they're the best and unlimited capabilities so the idealized self image is again glorified they are glorifying their image so how are compliant people seeing themselves they are seeing themselves as good and saintly so compliant people when they are complying with others they cannot be assertive they actually see themselves as okay i'm very good and saintly i'm not talking against others so i'm very good that is how they are seeing themselves they cannot see themselves as actually they are compliant they are weak and they are not able to uh, talk back to others in the times of need because they want that affection all the time so they see okay i'm good i'm saintly i don't talk back i'm very nice how do aggressive people build us a uh, idealized image they see themselves as very strong heroic omnipotent but aggressive people in reality comes out to be aggressive but for them their self image is very strong they are the best and how do detached neurotics pain themselves that they are very wise and they are self sufficient and that they are very independent but they are actually very lonely but they cannot see themselves as lonely so they have to create a self image that oh they are very wise that they can be independent of others they don't need others that is how they make their self image and over time this self image becomes very solidified so horn i recognize three aspect of this idealized self image that is the neurotic search of glory neurotic claims and neurotic pride so neurotic search for glory includes three other elements the need for perfection neurotic ambition and the drive towards vindictive tri- triumph for ugc net you just need to know these so i'm not going into detail about these but the name itself is whatever the name is suggesting is what it is 
then moving on to self hatred that is an intrapsychic conflict as well now like the people with a neurotic search for glory can never be happy with themselves because when they realize that this real self does not match with the insa- insatiable demands of their idealized self so they've created this idealized self image which is perfect but they are in reality not perfect so what is happening they've created this self their real self is not same as this idealized self image and this they don't they don't face this real self all the time but when they do they see it's not matching with the uh, real uh, idealized self image at all and there is a internal self hatred they hate what they are that is why they make a self image for themselves a self image they would love the what karen hornay says is that the glorified self becomes not only a phantom phantom to be pursued it also becomes a measuring rod which uh, with which uh, they want to measure their actual being so this this self image which they have created they are always striving to be se- like that self image now the self image is neurotic they the neurotics have made that self image but that self image is not a reality but they are always wanting to be like that self image and that self but they would never be like that self image and when they are not able to become like that self image self hatred is growing so hornay recognized six major ways in which people express their self hatred how do they express first is the relentless demands on the self like they almost tyrannical towards themselves like some people make demands on, the, on themselves that don't stop even when they achieve a success these people continue to push themselves towards perfection because they believe th- they should be perfect but that cannot be a reality and when that reality of being perfect and achieving everything does not come true self hatred increases merciless self accusation they tell themselves is pe- like they tell themselves if people only knew me they would realize i'm pretending to be knowledgeable i'm pretending to be competent and sincere but they're really a fraud they are telling this to themselves they, they self accuse themselves a lot that self hatred it may also take the form of self con- contempt which might be expressed as belittling doubting ridiculing oneself almost the same thing and they're always frustrated with themselves because they created a self image for themselves to save themselves but they can never be like that self image so they're always self frustrated because what the goal they have made for themselves is quite a phantom that is not something they can achieve so the self hatred is increasing it can also be manifested as self torment or self torture now like the, if they start a fight where they start a fight because they would know that they would lose so before losing they would start a fight they cannot accept that they cannot lose and they're always torturing these are almost same as each other okay if you see self destructive actions again and like driving recklessly working too hard taking in you know, alcohol or drugs these are all self destructive actions and these might in turn affect the relationships they are having their life and in turn what happens is they hate themselves 
even more because they are not going towards the self image because they can never go to towards the self image so i hope you understand the intra psychic conflicts and these are always intra psychic conflict because these are always conflicting their entire life the conflicts never stop so this was the intra psychic conflict and this was the last thing today on the, on part 3 of karen hornay's theory of psychoanalytical social theory i hope you understand and if you have any questions i will put down the link so you can send me questions and for the link for the a whiteboard i will be again putting that in the description down below thank you so much for listening and have a very great day